Hello everybody, uh, Dan Calloway here again, and uh, today uh, I'm in my Arch Linux system, Silent OS. Really, I'm loving it, and I want to demonstrate uh, to you how to go about setting up a Linux swap in this operating system. Now, when I installed uh, Silent OS, I let it go ahead, the Calamaris installer, I let it go ahead and just uh, erase the entire hard drive and install one partition. I didn't worry about a root partition, a boot partition, and I didn't uh, worry about a home partition. I just let it partition one partition for the entire drive and also as a result of that I did not set up a swap partition either in this system. The intention there was uh, purposeful. It wasn't just uh, forgetful um, or an accident. Uh, I wanted to set up a swap file after um, I created uh, the install for Silent OS, and so today's video is to show you how to go about uh, creating a swap file in the Linux system. Now, you may be wondering, you know, I thought you had to create a Linux swap partition uh, rather than a file. I thought, you know, you might be asking, I thought the swap files were only for Windows, and they're called page files. Well, that's not true. Uh, in Windows, page files do exist, and yes, they are considered swap, but in Linux, you can have either one. You can have either a partition, physical partition on the hard drive, or you can have a file called a swap file in Linux. Uh, and I'm going to show you today how to go about creating that swap file. Uh, the, the couple of advantages for doing it this way, uh, one is if you create a partition on uh, the hard drive of swap, it's difficult to um, get rid of it. You know, you'd have to go in and use gparted and eliminate the swap uh, partition, and you may affect other data. Uh, it's a little bit uh, dicey. Uh, also, if you needed to increase the size of the um, swap partition, you'd have to get into some kind of partitioning utility and increase the the, the size of that partition as well, and that can be a little tricky as well. So. The advantage of having the file is, is you can expand the file fairly easily and you can move the file and you can delete the file very, fairly easily as well. So it's, it's a lot easier to use a file. So let's talk about what is a Linux swap. Well, essentially, uh, swap space uh, is a restricted area uh, of the physical memory that you have uh, that is allocated for use by the operating system. Uh, when available memory or RAM has been fully utilized. Um, it is the memory management that involves swapping sections of memory so that, uh, well, swapping sections of memory rather to and from physical storage. Okay, So keep in mind though that uh, applications that use swap rather than physical RAM will load slower uh, they will perform slower if swap is used rather than physical RAM. And the reason for that is that physical RAM is about anywhere from 10 to 15,000 or more times faster than a physical swap area of the hard drive. And that's basically because of the hard drive, mechanical hard drives. Now with modern hard drives that are SSDs, um, you know, that may not be the case. Uh, in fact, it may be that the hard drive is pretty much as fast as physical RAM, but I'm talking uh, mechanical hard drives here, so you're looking at about a 10,000 to even possibly 20,000 times uh, slower if you're using the hard drive than physical RAM. Uh, you might need to use swap though, even though you may be thinking that, you know, I don't need swap in Linux. And that's because some applications are written to utilize swap uh, by design rather than uh, just when you're out of physical RAM. Um, on most distributions of Linux, it's recommended that you set a swap space when installing the operating system. And the amount of swap space that you can set for a Linux system may depend on the architecture and the kernel version that you have. So let me get into the terminal and uh, take a look at the kernel that I have. I'm going to run a uname r command. You can see I'm running the latest kernel 4.20.7-arch11-arch. And so 
you know, it's going to be able to utilize swap very, uh, very easily. Uh, and it really, really won't, uh, you know, matter which one you use, whether you use a partition or if you use a swap space. All right. So, um, but you need to check out your kernel to make sure that it can take a swap file. All right. So, um, as I said, um, creating a swap file in Linux is similar to the idea of creating a swap in, in Windows. The uh, primary difference is in Windows-based OSs, uh, it uses the page file concept rather than the swap partition. Whereas in Linux, basically, you typically see a swap partition. But I gave you the rationale for not using a partition and using the swap file. In my particular case, I chose to use the swap file, and I'll get into that here in a second. Um, so let's ask a question here. Is how much uh, swap do you need in Linux? You know, do I need any at all? And I think I answered that one. Yes, you do. Uh, but typically, the amount of available RAM in your system, if it's less than 1 gig or equal to 1 gig, uh, then the amount of swap that you should create either in a swap file or a partition should be two times the amount of RAM that you have. So with a one gig uh, RAM stick you should have um, two gigs of swap file or uh, partition used as swap. Um, if you have two to four gigabytes of available RAM in your system then the amount of swap that you should uh, set up is should be equal to the amount of RAM that you have installed. So let's say I have 4 gigs of RAM on my system, then I'll want to set up a 4 gig swap file or a 4 gig swap partition. Okay. Now if you have 8 gigs of RAM or higher, then the amount of RAM that you should install in the system, I mean the amount of swap that you should install in the system should be about half of the available RAM that you have. So with an 8 gig uh, RAM stick, uh, you can get away easily with 4 gig uh, swap file or partition. 16 gigs of RAM, 8 gig swap file, all right, and so forth. So let me go ahead and show you here how I uh, set up my swap file in Linux. Um, and I'm not going to actually execute the commands because I've already set up the swap file, but I'll show you the commands that I did run, and uh, you can just execute them for yourself. So let me get into the terminal. First command that I ran was to actually uh, create the swap file itself. And that swap file uh, was created in the root of the file system. And so I ran the command sudo fallocate with an L switch. And I want to set up a 4 gig um, swap file. And then a space forward slash swap file. All right sudo fallocate dash or tac l 4 gig and then forward slash swap file so that when you execute that command it immediately creates that file called swap file on the root of the file system uh, 4 gigs in size it's not swap yet but it's got the file alloc it's allocated that space for the file now uh, you don't have to put it in the root I just chose to put it in the root in my case you can put it anywhere you want all right, so after you execute that command and you have the file created, the next command that you want to create is a command that changes or modifies the permissions on your swap file location so that no one can access it but you. Now, in my case, uh, I'm the user of the system, Data Pioneer, and so I want to be able to read and write to that area. It's necessary that you be able to do both of those, read and write. But I don't want uh, anyone else belonging to my... Uh, user group or to uh, anybody else in the world uh, to be able to access that swap file location at all. Either to read it or to access it or to definitely not to write to it. Okay, so the permissions that I would need to set on the file to do that would be 600. Okay, read and write for the user only. And so to do that I'm going to go ahead and issue the command sudo chmod um, 600 forward slash swap file. Okay, so when I execute that, then it's going to change the permissions on the swap file that I created, which were not initially 600. It's going to change it to 600. All right, so once you've got the permissions set on that, next thing you want to do is you want to make that file a swap. 
In order to do that in Linux, you run the command sudo make swap forward slash swap file. All right, once you execute that command, then it takes that swap file that you created and you change permissions on, and it makes it a swap file. All right. All right, so once you've created, or once you've executed, rather, those three commands, the next thing you want to do is you want to turn the, the swap on that you've just created. So to do that, you run the command sudo make, or sudo uh, swap on forward slash swap file. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the swap file, which has now been made to be a swap location, and I'm turning it on. So sudo swap on forward slash swap file. All right. One thing you have to remember is, is that will work as long as I'm in the terminal, as long as my session is not closed. But once I close the session, especially if I restart the system, then swap file will no longer be a turned on swap location for the system. So I got to make that persistent. And the way I do that is I have it auto mount in a file called the file system table or fstab and the fstab file is located in Etsy under the Etsy directory and so it is uh, Etsy fstab so what I want to do is I want to modify that so what I want to do next is I want to issue a command called sudo nano uh, I could do vim but most people use nano so I'll just go ahead and do that sudo nano Etsy fstab and get into the file itself alright so once I get into the file then what I want to do is I want to run, uh, I want to actually modify the fstab file this way that you see this bottom uh, entry here, which is forward slash swap file, tab swap, tab swap, tab defaults, spa double space, zero, double space, zero. Okay. Um, and then once I get that created, that's going to mount swap file automatically every time it boots up. And so now I want to do a control X and yes. Okay. I've already saved it, so it didn't uh, prompt me to save. All right. So now once we've uh, saved the file you know, with control X and then Y to save, we're going to navigate to um, the root. And you can see here that we have a swap file. Okay. That's serving as swap on the system located uh, at the root of um, the file system. If I run the, the command lslh, uh, you can see here that swap file is a, a file that has read-write for the user only and nobody else has access to it. And look, it's four gigs in size, all right? And it was created here on this system on February the 9th at 10.45 p.m. The owner of the file is root, and the uh, group that the that the file belongs to is root as well. All right, all right. So let me get out of here. And now that we have our swap file set up, um, there are several ways that we can verify the existence of this file and that it's working properly. Uh, and I'm going to show you eight different ways to verify uh, that we have swap performing in our system. So I'm going to get back in the terminal. And one of the commands that I can issue to verify my swap is to run the command swap on and then space tac tac summary. All right. And then when I do that, it's going to do a summary of the swap file location, which is here at the root of the file system. And you can see it's a file and it is of size 4 gigs and it is of priority minus 2. All right, so that means it has a uh, fairly high priority of usage in the system. All right, that's one way of verifying it. Another way is to read a file called proc uh, swaps. All right, so there's a file called swaps located under the directory proc, and so if I do a cat of that, it actually replicates the command output you know, the standard out that I had in the uh, swap on summary command up above it. So that's the second way of, of verifying it. All right. A third way of looking at the swap file to make sure that it's working for you is to run the free command 
and use the M switch. All right, and so you can see here that we have a swap area and that it is uh, four gigs in size uh, and that none is being used. So that tells you a little more information than these do. Well, actually, it tells you zero use here. And so none's being used, all right, because I've got eight gigs of RAM in my system. Four gigs free uh, here, and, uh, and so we can see that swap is functioning, all right. Another command we can use, let me go ahead and clear the screen, is to run the top command. And if you run the top command, you can see here that here's the swap information. It says it's four gigs in size with a total of four gigs with zero used all right, and four gigs available, total, well, eight gigs rather, total memory available. All right, so there's another way to verify uh, that we have swap functioning. I'm going to go ahead and quit and clear the screen. Uh, there's one more command you can use, and that is uh, ATOP. So let me run the ATOP command. Now, in this particular case, I had to install ATOP. It wasn't installed by default. And so I had to go in and install ATOP. But ATOP is a command that lets you uh, actually take a look at your swap. And you can see that, uh, you know, that, that swap is available here in the system. Uh, and um, let me just find it. Uh, I know that it's, here we go, SWP. All right, SWP. And it tells us that we have uh, a total of, four gigs of swap space available and that we have four gigs free so we haven't used any of our swap here um, in the system at all and we, we could tell that from the previous commands alright so let me go ahead and close that and let me get back into the terminal again and another command that you can use is htop if you don't want to use top htop will give you a little more information in that it will give you a graphical, in curses graphical rep representation of your swap space. It says that 0k of swap is being used with 4 gigs of uh, available swap area uh, available to the system. Okay, so we we verified in multiple ways here now that we do have 4 gigs of uh, swap file available for Linux to use. All right, and there's a couple more commands to run. Uh, one more that we can run here is called glances. I had to install this one as well, G-L-A-N-C-E-S. And it takes a couple of seconds for glances to actually load. But here we go, uh, glances is loaded. And so we can see here that we have swap available in the system, that we are utilizing 0% of it, and that we have uh, a system here 4.3 percent uh, usage used um, we have four gigs here free okay set up we have a total of four gigs of memory allocated to swap and four gigs of that memory here as being free all right and then the final command I want to show you uh, for verification of your swap is the command vstat. All right, and so let me run that command. Nope, oh, it's not found. I'm going to have to go ahead and install that. So let me let me go ahead and do that. P A C I N S. That's a, an alias we have set up in Silent OS for installing something. Vstat. Let me see if I can install vstat here. No, nope, it didn't find it. Okay, so I'm. Uh, I'm not going to be able to install the vstat command, but the vstat command would also be one if you did install it um, or were able to install it, you could uh, utilize to verify your your um, swap file that you created as well. All right, so this has been a video on creating a swap file in Linux uh, rather than a swap partition and then accessing that information using various commands in the system. Uh, to make sure that you have a swap and that it is functioning properly and how much swap you're being that you're, you're actually using in that system. All right, so have a great day. Take care.